Good evening, I'm Jordan Norcus. Thank you for joining us for 18 News at 5. And I'm Zach Wheeler. And I'm Jordan Norcus. Thank you for joining us for 18 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Jordan Norcus. Thank you for joining us for 18 News at 10. Good evening, everyone. I'm Zach Wheeler. And I'm Jordan Norcus. Thank you for joining us for 18 News at 11. I got my bachelor's at a pretty expensive private school. I got my master's at the same pretty expensive private school, and I've racked up a lot of student loans. The pay is rough when you first start, and I feel like a lot of people, not even just the pay, but they don't want to put the work in. You know, like when you first start, there's so much. Like, you know what I mean? You're, so, you're wearing so many different hats. You're anchoring, reporting, producing, editing. You're literally doing everything, which is, and it's great. Those are all so important skills to have, you know, like to be a true multimedia journalist, it is so valuable. Finding the passion in your work, working hard, and being a woman in this industry, you are so much more than your looks. There, you have a story to tell, and you tell that story great. I work for WETM as the primetime evening news anchor. The legislative session today has come and gone, and the governor's emergency executive powers have survived, at least for now. I work at Jim's Gym in Elmira. I'm the front desk associate, so I go around, I take care of memberships, go around cleaning, make sure everything is sanitized for COVID guidelines. I'm a bartender at Round and Thirds Sports Bar. Basic bartending duties there, and then I'm also another bartender barkeep at a brewery, Upstate Brewing Company. When those jobs are busier, because obviously it's a lot more engaging, make more money and it goes by quicker, so I don't know, I feel like the quicker, pay, the, quicker the pace of the environment, the more I thrive, I feel. So usually I set my alarm for four, um, gives me like, you know what I mean, like about, about a half hour to get myself together. Um, and today I set my alarm for three o'clock, hoping to get up early, shower, make myself look nice and presentable. And then I just kept laying there, staring at the ceiling, and then too much time passed. I was like, well, guess I'm putting on a hat today. That starts my first shift. That job is a lot cleaning based. So I'm going around sanitizing all the machines. Great in the people, meeting the community firsthand. When I was in high school, I did a lot, so I thought I worked hard, but seeing what she does here, this full-time job, you know, this is more than a full-time job because it's stressful and, you know, it's our lives. The fact that she can do that, take a nap, go there, and still have that, like, smile on her face, I, I don't know how she does it, which is crazy. That's why I like to help her out whenever I can, even if it's just bringing her a coffee to get through the next couple hours. I think it's a coffee, I don't know. I couldn't really ever drink it. I'm trying to like weasel my way because like I need it. I need something. I'm like warming up with like hot chocolate espresso shots and they're kind of doing something I guess. I've had so many people come up to me like, you, I don't know how you do it. I'm like, I don't know how I do it either. It's hard working, working, constantly working. It'd be nice to have a day off every once in a while, but I don't know. I like being immersed in the community. My whole life I've always been a performer. I love being in front of people. I started at an early age doing dance classes, I was a cheerleader, and then I really found my passion for acting and singing, so I've done that my entire life. And I actually went to school for physical therapy. I was in a three plus three accelerated doctorate program, and I liked it, but I was like, I'm not feeling passionate about this, and because I'm such a passionate person, I want to feel something. I want to feel something for my work. I like being in front of people. I like telling people stories. How can I culminate the two? I took, it was like some kind of news writing class for a newspaper as an elective, and I loved it, and I, ex I excelled at it. I was like, you know what, maybe this is something more for me, you know, more something I would in actually enjoy. And I ended up doing the switch, caught up on all the classes, and the rest is history from there.
I learned from an early age the importance of managing your time and setting priorities too. Because when you have so much coming at you, it's like, okay, like I need to do this, 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 and this. How do I decide what stuff to get done first? Because it could be so overwhelming. So I think having all those kind of responsibilities at, at an early age kind of set me up for that and prepared me for my future to come. I feel like between all four of my jobs, they are all so community-based. If anything, I feel like once they, they see me out, not only getting to know the community, but actually working with the community, they almost have more respect for you. It almost like makes, they're like, oh wow, like you're a real person. Like you're actually like, you're making my favorite drink or like you're cleaning the treadmill. Some people come and they just do the job and move on, but she again has all these eggs in different baskets, you know what I mean? So she is leaving an impression on everyone, people that don't watch the news. You know, not everyone that comes to the gym watches the news. They know her from the gym. Not everyone from uh, the bar watches the news, so they know her as that. I think it makes it even harder thinking about how other people think it's glamorous, you know. We don't get the makeup artists, we don't have the hairstylists. We're lugging our equipment around ourselves, you know, most of the time you're a one-man band. A lot of the stories we cover aren't glamorous, you know, we can do a lot of hard stuff. The U.S. has now surpassed 500,000 COVID-related deaths. But it goes back to, you know, like I said, the pay isn't great. And it's a, it's, it's a reality, it is what it is. You have a burden on your shoulder sometimes, and it's sometimes it's hard to get past that. I call them my, my funks. I get them every once in a while. Everyone does, especially now with COVID. Mental health is like so important, you know, and everyone, it takes a toll on everyone somehow, whether it's big or small. But I think it's, you know, a matter of remembering what you're doing is important, the work you're doing is important, but I know it'll pay off in the future. I know I'm putting in my time now and it's gonna have such a big payoff for years to come. Each job that she does, she's still the same Jordan Norcus, so everyone knows that. I am who I am, you know, it's my personality. I'm not, you know what I mean, I'm not gonna put up a front and be like, all right, I'm News Jordan today. Oh, today I'm bartender Jordan, or today I'm sanitarial, like, front desk Jordan. I'm always me. And I feel like that's why I feel like I have such a great relationship with the community because I, I don't know, I'm just always myself. And like, I love to get to know them and have them get to know me, vice versa, you know? It's a, I'm a very open book with them. So, I'm always Jordan. Growing up, my mom would send us to lunch and it was everything my brother liked. She knew I didn't like Fig Newtons and she knew I didn't like bananas and she knew I didn't like peanut butter and jelly. What else did she know? Did I get that? That was my lunch? Yes. I hid them behind radiators. You know when you have that feeling, you can't quite explain it, but it's just like a deeply embedded feeling like, I know I'm gonna be successful. I, I know I was put on this planet to do something and make a difference. And for me, that's telling people stories. So you gotta push yourself. I and mean, that's, that's how you grow, by pushing yourself, jumping out of your comfort zone. You find out new things about yourself. You grow so much and you shock yourself in the best way possible. Who is the star? Well, if, it's, if the camera's on me. <laughs> Stop. How'd I do? <laughs> I was waiting until you said it. I can redo it. I have legs. <laughs> How'd I do? <laughs> she, she gets up here and goes, oh. looks dead at the camera. <laughs> How did I do?